Well, as you get moving forward and moving into a community, looking at establishing the foundation to get a new church up and going, one of the key stages, and I would argue to say it's probably even one of the more difficult stages, is building a launch team. Now, how do we go from zero to 10? How do we go from zero to 40? And uh, in order to establish a strong group of people that are ready to actually help us get this church up and off the ground. Well, you want to think that we need stages. There needs to be, in other words, rungs on the ladders before you invite people to actually be on the launch team. You need opportunity to kind of observe and be able to go, is this person safe for us to invite on the launch team? At the same time, you've got to give them space to get to know who you are, what you're looking at building, and make sure it's a good fit for them as well. A great step in between as you get to know people and you're putting word out, whether or not on social media or just personal interactions that, hey, we're going to start a brand new church, is you want to host some type of information meeting where you give the opportunity in a more formal moment to be able to walk through the vision, talk about the DNA, the culture, your prayer for the community, and invite people to potentially take the next step in helping you establish the groundwork of a new church. So how do you actually, number one, pull off an information meeting? Well, here's kind of a basic idea, and let me kind of walk you through the different components. At some point, you want to start the meeting, and I would encourage you to start it on time. Maybe it's at 7 p.m. on a Sunday night type of thing. Um, If you have the opportunity to maybe stand up in a church and just tell people in the church, hey, we're going to be doing this. If you know anybody, or even if you would like to hear a little bit more about what we're going to be doing, um, why don't you join us for an information meeting tonight or this afternoon? And uh, keep it less, you know, around an hour or even just shorter than an hour in the process. If you're at a stage, number two, if you're at a stage where you have worship team already established or at least a worship leader in place, consider doing one, maybe even two songs. Strip it down. It doesn't need to be full on with lights and sound and all that, but strip it down maybe just an acoustical style just to kind of get people focused, number one, spiritually to the conversation that you're going to have. But this is also a great time to kind of introduce people to the style of music that you're looking at establishing in the new in the life of this new church. Now, again, if you're meeting and you have some type of sponsor, maybe it's a network sponsor, maybe it's a coach, maybe it's the church that is hosting you for this information meeting, this is a great time to actually give them the floor and let them lend a level of credibility to why they're excited about you, why they're they're excited about this new church and this community. And so look at giving them kind of a word from the sponsor moment. And then at the same time, if there are other multiple people in the room that you kind of go, hey, they're important, and this would be maybe a great moment to give them 30 seconds, 15 seconds just to lend credibility, this is, would be the moment as well that you want to make a few key introductions. And then the next step is you want to really go after why a new church. And I gave you kind of five talking points early in to this conversation in this course of why do we need to do church and why do we do church planting? Um, walk them through that, just as I did with you. Um, talk about it. It's about the mission of God. It's about the glory of God. It's about the kingdom of God. Talk about the evangelistic momentum that takes place in a new church, in a new community, when a new church is established. Talk about just the overall community need and kind of what's going on demographically in the United States and how this will become a major crisis in, in future generations if this current generation doesn't fight for establishing new churches right now. Um, At some point then, once you kind of get through why a new church, talk a little bit about your vision for this church. Um, Again, you don't need to beat this to the ground. This is not a 45, 50 minute type of conversation. You want to talk about next steps, point out helpful information. Um, to them. If it's, hey, I, you know, there's back there on the table by the cupcakes or by the Cokes, um, we have some brochures. In that brochure, there's a spot there that talks about, I'm interested, for, I, you know, please send me more information. That'll sign you up for the newsletter. Tell them, hey, would you fill that out, rip it off, throw it in the basket, and uh, we would love to be able to follow up with you if you're interested in that. But this is where you want to establish kind of what the next step is for them, no matter what. But I would at the same time get as many people praying for you um, and for this new church that you have captive audience with. At the same time, 
you've got people. And so this would be a great time to get some helpful information. So consider taking a survey of those that are actually in the information meeting. Ask them, what kind of topics do you think a church should engage in this community that uh, people would find relevant? Um, you will find, you probably have two years of sermon uh, ideas right there just based off of that survey. So figure out maybe three, four different questions that you could survey the crowd that attends your information meeting. To, number one, it shows that they're buying in, they're listening, and uh, there's a level of interest in what you're doing. At the same time, they could give you and provide you some really helpful information when it comes to establishing this new work. And then you want to leave a few moments for Q&A. But let's say you get to the one hour mark, just stop it. Say, hey, I want to respect your time. I said an hour, so we're going to pause here, but I'm going to hang out. My family's going to hang out. If you have other questions, we'll hang out as long as you want to hang out to answer those questions and give people the, the ability to get up and move, um, but at the same time that they could get their personal questions asked if, if they have um, a concern or a thought. Once you kind of get this, now we're moving towards launch team development. And uh, number one, most important critical aspect to the launch team development stage is you need to establish some level of what I dub agenda harmony. What is agenda harmony? It means you're bringing people from outside perspectives, churched or even unchurched, in to help establish this new church and the foundation. Um, you want to make sure they're carrying into that the right DNA, th something that you want to replicate. If they're not healthy, you don't want to necessarily invite them to be on your launch team because you're going to be spending more time dealing with them and they become a project than you actually being able to focus in on establishing this new church. And so de consider developing a set of kind of operational cultural values. I would encourage you to write them out. This is who we are. This is what we think. When it comes to things like maybe children's ministry, worship ministry, um, debt, are we going to take on debt in order to build a building? I mean, think through the hot topics that people may come and have an interest in or have questions about and just write out your answers and your thoughts ahead of time, which shows a level of, hey, I'm already there. I'm already thought through these things. They're going to tend to not argue with you as much about those things since they, they realize, well, you've already given a lot of time to this. But develop that set of operational and cultural values. Number two, you need to understand values have to be measurable. So again, if we're going to value prayer, how do we measure that? If we're going to value life change, how are we going to measure that? And really come up with and even explain to people, hey, these are the things that we're going to focus in on to help us know, are we making a difference? Are we moving the ball down the field? Um, and uh, it's good to just allow people to have an understanding of that early on. The reality is values are not values until they're tested. And so you want, you, as you articulate these things, know that people will trust, they're, they're going to push back on you, and they're going to see if this truly is a value. And so you want to hold to those values, and, and that's why writing them down will help you in that process. Also, one's past behavior is the best gauge for future values. So as you're inviting people to consider landing with you on a launch team, you need to know what their past behavior is at, at a previous church. Um, you'll find a lot of people who go, well, I was an elder at this church. And, and what, the, in other words, they're referencing is you kind of need me. I'm kind of an important person. Those are the type of people you need to really watch carefully. And you need to have a kind of a red flag needs to go up going, going, I don't know if I can trust this person. Um, you never want to find yourself when you're developing a launch team that you need people. When you need people, um, you will tend to compromise your values and your culture in order to keep people on your team. Allow the values, allow the culture to drive who you invite to be a part of that. One of the deterrents for me that I did that was very helpful was um, we were already on staff of a church before we planted our first church, and we were planting a church about 25 minutes away from that established church. The church was very kind, very generous, and allowed us to stand up and share our vision and then we hosted an information that one of the evenings of that week. And we had close to probably 150 people show up to that information meeting. Again, our goal was not to take a bunch of Christians and just establish a new work. Our goal was to do something that reached those that were far from Christ. And so we knew we didn't want all these people. We knew that there were people in the room that were looking for an opportunity to leave their current situation and that this may be that opportunity for them to do that. And so we shared, we walked through kind of the information meeting layout that I just walked you through. But then at the end of that, when it came to kind of pointing them to key information, I said, hey, there's a packet back there. It talks about the demographics of the community we're going, what kind of church is going to walk you through the culture and the value statements. 
At the same time, you'll find that there's an application in there. If you wouldn't mind, if you're interested in joining our team, fill out the application, set up a time. We're going to do a, a quick interview and walk through that application and make a decision whether or not this is a right fit for you or not. I tell you, after we walked with that level of clarity, those that were in the interest meeting were gone. And uh, we were left with only bringing 12 people on our team, but they were 12 people that were all in. And we even had people that submitted applications, but they weren't healthy. And we just told them, this isn't a good fit for you. And so we created kind of spheres of operation that they could be a part of. Um, we talked about, hey, launch team all in, and we asked for a three-year commitment when it came to being on our launch team. We also asked people to be maybe short-term missionaries. Hey, would you come and just serve for the first month? Would you come and serve for the first six months um, and recognize that, hey, you may never even actually get into an actual service because you're here helping us get things in place so that we have a healthy start. Um, we even asked people, would you come for the first couple months and just come maybe on the first Sunday of the month to help give us critical mass when it came to where we were meeting and adding energy or fuel to the room? Um, so there are multiple ways in which people can be involved and not necessarily even be on your launch team. And so if you feel like you need to tell somebody no, maybe look for one of those other opportunities that they can find a place or a niche to help and be a part of the church process as well. You want to figure out a way in which even if you say no, you you can say yes in a way that helps relieve some of that pain for them. Um, I actually have a sample questionnaire on uh, my website if you go to the resources page at thechurchguru.org um, and you can download it for free and gives you just some helpful perspectives and helpful questions to think through when it comes to an application that you would have your launch team actually fill out. Why is this important? You can literally be walking side by side and just be one degree off and down the road what you find is you're light years apart and so you want to minimize that that um, difference early on as quickly as possible. And uh, it will really, really save you some long-term pain in that process. Now, here's a little bit of a conversation I like to have with anybody that's looking at planning a church. And it simply focuses in on language. Language matters. And it really helps paint a picture of what we're about. And uh, I, you probably have heard that I use launch team over and over and over again. There is a difference between using the, the phrase launch team and core team. And yet, for some reason, we use those synonymously. And I want to really encourage you that as you're establishing this work and you're creating a solid working foundation, use the language launch team over core team. And this is why. Let me walk you through. What is a core team? Well, a core team is a number of Christians who have been gathered as a Bible study with a goal of starting a church. A launch team is establishes a group of evangelistic bringers who have been selected by the church planter to assist in founding a new church. So the idea is a launch team recognizes, hey, we're here to launch something. We're here to reach out and, and meet as many people in our community. They're owning the vision of that really resides behind it. The core team just says, yeah, you kind of need us and we like being together and we like being part of the Bible study. They may not realize like there's an expectation or a job to what we bring. The core team also may or may not view the church planter as the leader, which means that they may or may not see themselves as followers. In other words, hey, we're just part of the core like everybody else. And just as the pastor is part of the core, we're part of the core. And so, again, they may not differentiate the voice of the leader versus what their role is on the team. The launch team establishes the church planter as their servant leader. Thus, they understand what it means to be servant followers. A core team usually also doesn't have a stated purpose with a definable end. In other words, when does the core team stop being the core? They don't. They're like, well, we were always the core. We've always been a part of this. Well, a launch team actually has a stated purpose and a goal with a definable with definable points. They have a definable end point, meaning we don't exist anymore once the church actually launches. Now we have to operate as the church. And uh, what happens long term is if this isn't really defined early on, the core team mentality can oftentimes foster an us versus them mentality, which really makes it difficult for new people to break in and feel like they're a part of the church, that they're a part of the team. Um, because you have this concept, well, we were here at the beginning. We're the core team. You guys are new. You haven't paid the price that we paid. The launch team idea and concept fosters more of an other-centeredness because it's about 
the definable thing of launching a new church. And what that, in the long term, helps to avoid some of that insider-outsider distinction that can take place. And the interesting thing is our language makes a difference. And so pay attention to the words that you use, the way and the context by which you use them. Uh, I would encourage you, avoid the core team conversation and just focus in on helping people understand what does it mean to be a part of a launch team? What are the expectations of that? And I would celebrate when it comes to an end and uh, just tell everybody, hey, well done, congratulations, now we're a church. And now there's a different expectation because we got the church up and going.